Hello guys, so today I wanted to share with you 5 UX and UI principles that you'll find in most websites. So let's start with the first one, which is the principle of common region. And this principle states that elements tend to be perceived into groups if they are sharing an area with a clearly defined boundary. Now this principle of grouping uh, are a set of principles uh, that were first proposed by psychologists to account for the observation that humans naturally perceived objects as organized patterns and objects. So let's take a look at an example here. We have a kind of a dashboard where we see some data at the top and we also see what it looks like to be two charts at the bottom. And let's see how we can apply the principle of common region here. So one way to do this would be to define uh, clear areas for each group so that users can identify each group uh, quicker. So here we have a clearly defined area for the top data and then we have uh, the two charts with also some borders uh, so that we can clearly see uh, the three groups. Now let's see the principle number two. The principle of Shaco states that users spend most of their time on other sites, which means that users prefer your site to work the same way as all the other sites that they already know. So this uh, principle was first uh, introduced by Jacob Nielsen, which is called the king of usability. It's, he's a user advocate and principal of the Nielsen Norman Group, which is a group that um, spends a lot of resources uh, on research for the UX and UI on the web. So he basically describes that the tendency for users to develop an expectation of the design and conventions are based on their cumulative experience from other websites. So he's encouraging designers to follow these uh, guidelines or conventions so that users can focus on the message or the product instead of thinking how they can perform certain action or how they, they can navigate uh, our website. So let's take a look at an example here. Uh, we have uh, an e-commerce store displaying a product item and we can see that two different websites, they follow the same conventions. For example, they have the product image on the left, they have a nice big title and description, they have also some specifications on the products and they have a big call to action button that allows the user to add the product to the cart. So this way users again can focus on the product instead of thinking how they can find a particular information or how they can add this product to the cart because by following these conventions the users uh, are already know how to do that. Let's take a look at the principle number three or the principle of fit. This principle states that the time it takes someone to select an object in the screen depends on how far the cursor is from that object and the size of that object. This principle was actually discovered by the psychologist Paul Fitz. After examining the human motor system, it showed that the time required to move to a target depends not only on the distance to it, but also on the size of the target. So let's take a look at an example on how we can apply this principle in the web. So here we have what it looks like to be a search input and then uh, right at the bottom after some content, maybe after the search results, we have the call to action that performs that search. As you can see, this is not ideal because the call to action is far away from the input. So one way that we can improve this design would be to just move that call to action right uh, next to the search input. So this way uh, we are reducing the time it takes the user to perform this particular action. Let's take a look at principle number four or the principle of goal gradient. So this principle states that the tendency to approach a goal increases with the proximity to that goal. So this principle was first uh, proposed by the behaviorist Clark Hull in 1932, and it states just that, that the tendency for a user to finish a goal or to approach that goal will increase if we show some kind of progress or some proximity to that goal. So one way that we can apply this principle in web design would be to show the user with some kind of progress or loading state when they are performing certain action. For example, if they are uh, filling out a complex form that has multiple steps, uh, one way of applying the goal gradient principle would be to show in which step of that process the user is. 
And last, let's take a look at the principle of Miller, which states that the average person can only keep seven items in their working memory at any given time. In 1956, George Miller asserted that the span of immediate memory and absolute judgment were both limited to around seven pieces of information. So let's see how we can apply this to web design. Uh, so here we have some kind of uh, sidebar navigation with a lot of items on the left and one way that we can apply this principle would be to group those items into less uh, but more uh, easier to follow macro items or categories for example we have reports customers and products which is much easier to follow and to remember than all the other items now let's see how we can apply those principles in a real website so here I have a website that I built using Wix Studio and I think the website looks really good. It has some animations on it, uh, but I think also that there are some sections that need improvement, uh, especially this section that you'll see here. I think we can improve this section by applying the common region principle by setting some clear boundaries on each of these uh, three items. So I'll head over to my Wix website editor here and I already have a nice looking background for each of these items so I'll just make that visible by clicking here and now if you publish the website and just refresh the page uh, we should see some clear boundaries uh, in some clear regions uh, between these items so let's scroll down all the way until we find that section and yeah, I think it looks much better and I think it's easier now to identify these uh, items. Another improvement that I want to make here is on the top navigation. As you can see, we have eight items and according to the Miller principle, uh, every human has uh, the ability to retain at most seven items at any given time. And I think that we can also group the About Us and our team together within the company menu. So let's do that. Let's switch back to our website editor here. And if we click on our menu, manage menu, we can see how easily we can put those two sections beneath the company section. So we'll search for the about us and just right click on the three dots and move under company. And let's do the same for uh, our team here. Let's publish the site and let's see how this looks like. Now, if we refresh here, we should see these two items uh, gone. And if we hover over the company here, we see how those items are in this menu now. So I think this is a nice little improvement here. The third improvement that I want to do is I want to apply the shake up principle, which states that users spend most of their time in other websites, meaning that they expect some conventions on your own website. So here I would uh, assume that this is a nice hero section, but I would expect as a user to have a nice big call to action right beneath this uh, paragraph. So I'm going to add just that. I head over to Wix website editor here, I'll click on the plus uh, icon here to quickly add an element. I'll choose the button and I drag and drop it right where I want it, which is here. And I think that looks uh, about right. Maybe we can increase this a bit and give the font by choosing the text. Uh, let's give the font just 16 pixels there. Now let's publish this and let's see how it looks. After refreshing the site, we should expect to see uh, a button here that says uh, start now. And I think it looks really good. Uh, so yeah, this is the third principle that I wanted to apply. And the last principle that I want to apply is the principle of fit, which states that the time it takes a user to select an object depends on how far that object is from the cursor. So if we now go to the contact us section, which should be at the bottom, uh, we should see a nice uh, looking form here and then a submit button to request a quote. Uh, one little improvement that we can do here uh, following the fit principle is to move this uh, button right below the form because it will take less time for the user to complete uh, this entire action which is filling out the form and then submitting the quote. So let's head over to our Wix website editor 
and let's find that uh, contact us form. And if we double click here, we should see a button saying edit form. So let's click there. And what I want to do is I want to add a submit button at the bottom. So let's uh, search for the submit button here. And if you click on this, that button gets added uh, at the bottom following the flow of the form. Uh, and I just want to uh, rename this button to get a quote. Now let's save this and let's uh, publish our website one more time. I forgot to get rid of this uh, button here, so I'll do that. Let's just get rid of that one and let's republish our website. Let's refresh it here and we now should see that button uh, at the bottom of the form. So let's take a look. And yeah, it's there. So I think this looks much better than before.